Welcome to a series all about the sounds of English. In this series, we're going to learn all about the physical sounds that we have in English. Today, we're going to learn about the sonorants, that is, the nasals and the approximants. A sonorant consonant is a sound that is produced without any disturbance to the airflow, as opposed to obstruents, where the airflow is obstructed. Vowel sounds are also sonorant. Sonorant consonants in English can be split into nasals and approximants. The nasal consonants in English are m, n, and ng, as in mouth, nose, and sing. They are called nasals as articulating the sounds require airflow through the nose. M is the first sound we will talk about. It is called a bilabial nasal as both lips are closed for its articulation as air escapes through the nose. It is also voiced. Remember, you can check if a sound is voiced or voiceless by placing your finger on the front of your throat as you recite the sound. If you feel a vibration, it is voiced. If not, it is voiceless. N is a dental alveolar sound articulated by placing the tip or blade of the tongue at the alveolar ridge behind the upper teeth. It is also voiced, meaning the vocal cords vibrate. Ng is a sound which is found in words like long and song, and is usually written in English as ng. However, we also see it in words like ink and pink. It is a velar nasal, meaning that the back of the tongue rests against the velum at the soft palate. Like all English nasals, it too is voiced. English has four approximants which can be further split into liquids and glides. English has two liquids, ul, which is lateral, and r, which is rhotic. Liquids are a class of consonants that generally have a lot of freedom in English phonetics. They often have allophones, meaning that there are several ways to pronounce them. Ul is a weird one. It has two allophones in English, in this case depending on its context. Before vowels, it can be called clear L and appears in words such as lamp or light. In this case, it is articulated as an alveolar lateral approximant, with the blade of the tongue just touching the alveolar ridge behind the top teeth. We also have dark L, where the all sound is at the end of a word or before a consonant. This is found in words such as buckle, saddle and gold, the all sound in this position is a velarized alveolar lateral approximant. The back of the tongue is slightly raised, and in some dialects can even morph into an or sound. In the word little, there is an example of a clear L and a dark L. R is a rhotic consonant, and in English is most commonly realized as a post alveolar approximant. This is the sound we see in rabbit and red. However, the letter R is a lot more changeable. It can be a trill, also known as a rolled R. It can be a tap, like how an American English speaker would say in the middle of the word butter if they were talking fast and what is often mistaken for a D sound. Or it could be a guttural sound, with the back of the tongue reaching the soft palate. English has two glides, W and Y. They are called glides because the position of articulation glides from one place to another, they are also known as semivowels. I expect you've heard a lot of people saying that Y is a vowel in English. W, found in words like window and wine, is a labiovelar approximant and is articulated by rounding the lips and raising the back part of the tongue towards the soft palate. It is voiced, meaning its articulation results in vibration at the front of the throat. Y is a sound that is written using the English letter J in IPA. It is palatal, meaning the middle of the tongue is raised to meet the hard palate, and is also voiced. All of the sounds covered in this video differ from the plosives, fricatives and affricates that we have previously talked about, as they don't tend to come in voiced and voiceless pairs. Whereas they may have a voiced or voiceless partner in other languages, in English phonology, they are all highly individual sounds. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time when we'll begin to think about vowels.